So I am now officially recording. Uh, hi, everybody. And today's September 10th, and this is the Chaos Weekly Community Call. Again, this is kind of open, um, much of a, a less formal kind of call. So if people have uh, things they want to bring forward, now would be a great time to do it. I guess one of the things, I have a few things as always, but um, does anybody have anything on their mind that they'd like to bring forward? Work that they're doing, whatever it might be. Well, I do have one. Yeah. So uh, next week is uh, the Inner Source Commons is taking place in Baltimore yeah. area. Um, I got accepted a talk about uh, what we can learn from chaos uh, at the Inner Source Commons. So this is the talk about. Um, so I would like to say that this is happening. I still have to work on the slides, but this is happening. Can you talk a little bit about that? Thing? Yeah, so the idea is, so metrics is, oh, go ahead, sorry. I was just gonna say, I know you have an interest um, in kind of making, um, uh, kind of building a relationship between chaos and the way we think about inner source. So I'm all for yeah. it. I'm just kind of mm -hmm. curious as to what's on your mind. Yeah, so in our source, just to be sure that uh, we are all aligned. So this is about bringing open source methodologies or way of working uh, into large corporations, um, geographically distributed, et cetera, et cetera. So big companies realize that, uh, well, they, are, they, have, they have a similar structure as open source, but they don't have developers as engaged or as happy as in open source communities and they are not producing the high quality code. So the point is, it seems that they can learn from the open source world. Mm -hmm. So then I've been involved in the, in the, at the inner source commons for the last uh, three, four years by now. And one of the hot topics once and again is metrics. The point is that the, the metrics that the large corporations are trying to measure are kind of pretty similar, I mean, they are using a pretty similar infrastructure, set of GitHub.com, GitHub Enterprise, in, instead of GitLab Community Edition. Uh, perhaps they are using GitLab Community Edition and not GitLab.com, and Jira, Atlassian Stack, all of these things. So having basically the same tooling, mm -hmm. you can go and say, well, I can produce certain metrics. Uh, the point is that what large corporations are now learning from is, for instance, how to collaborate, how to uh, produce code in an open environment, how to be transparent, how to build community, how to do things that we are assuming from the open source ecosystem. So, uh, and for this, to track the success of the inner source initiative, one of the things they need, apart, apart from consultancy or tooling or processes or metrics. So, the way we are working in metrics I think is interesting because it happens that all of the organi or most of the organizations they are trying to have their own thing or they are trying to run their own thing without um, having a common view of the metrics that they are trying to retrieve or to achieve. So having the, the, the specific lessons learned that I think is quite useful is this idea of having kind of a release of metrics and say, hey, this is what we have. This is what we mean when we talk about this specific metric. So I wanted to bring all of this experience from chaos and working groups and the software and, and technical committee and so on into the inner source commons. So this is all. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Um, have any of those organizations expressed, mm -hmm. do you have a sense that the metrics are different or they're understood differently? I could see how the context is obviously considerably different. Yeah. Um, and so, maybe what they're using the metrics for? Uh, yeah, so, so the very first steps they are using the metrics for is to measure things as collaboration. So you have people from dif different business units participating across the organization. So they want to see that collaboration is happening. Okay. And that means people from different business units collaborating in the same repository, newcomers, um, retention rate, uh, these kind of things. Things that in open source is kind of assumed, right? So this is happening. Okay. 
Um, is it a little bit easier in the inner source space because they can actually map employee IDs yeah. a little bit easier? It's easier. I'm sure, yeah. It's like they're probably automatic. <laughs> not, not exactly that, but they have... Uh, like if they have SSO, like we have SSO here to our internal GitLab instance. Yeah. So like my ID is always known. Exactly. So they have people tend to have the same ID across several data sources as for email, Jira, review systems, and so on. So that, that part for uh, IDs is easier, I would say. Uh, but then as we are at, the, at least at the inner source commons, people are perhaps not that technical. Um, so they, they don't realize in some cases, unless you open the discussion that uh, when you are measuring a commit, it's not the same a commit if this is done by a bot or if this is done in a branch or if this is done in master or if this is done in a peer review process um, and how to count all of these commits. It's something that you need to be aware of and documenting somehow. So this is the way I, I'm trying to bring into the discussion of the inner source commons. But by the way, if you are in the Washington, Baltimore area, you are more than welcome to join next week. It's 50 bucks. So. <laughs> it's relatively cheap. <laughs> um, I, do you think there's anything, this is all super interesting. Do you think there's anything from the inner source commons side of things that would inform chaos? So a lot of what you've been talking about is kind of bringing maybe a more refined way of thinking about metrics and what those metrics can mean from the work that obviously is being done at Grimoire Lab and Chaos mm -hmm. to the audience at InnerSource. Do you think it goes the other way as well? Um, definitely. Because um, one of the things at least I'm learning from large corporations is uh, how to have metrics that are related to money, to budget. And this is kind of the work we are developing in chaos in some of the working groups. Um, so bringing this conversation into chaos is definitely worth. And some others that, uh, again, as I, as I mentioned before, we assume in the, in the open source world that, but perhaps we can help with us, this concept of collaboration or some other things, or transparency. How do you measure transparency? Uh, so there are some questions there that uh, can be, we, we can have together. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Andy, because you unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> so what I, what I want to say is um, one of the discussions that we have quite a lot uh, really centers around the idea of consortium and partnerships. Mm -hmm. That is corporate uh, development activities that are done, you know, with a, with a group of, of partners, and and how do you ensure sort of equitable, you know, distribution of contributions and and value? Uh, so I'll just bring that up as maybe something to something to look for in your discussions at that conference. I was also thinking, Andy, do you think? that folks from possibly the inner source commons could serve in that advisory role that you were talking about? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, there's, there's two, there's two types of, um, of a profile that we want for advisory. One is open source program office. We know tons of those. The other is um, people who are more on the economist side. Um, investment bankers, uh, economic professors, um, industry analysts, uh, people of that profile. And I've actually made, started making some progress. I've, I've got a, a, a stock analyst that I've been talking to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do want to reach out to Yana um, when the time is right. Okay. And it might be, um, Daniel, that there are people at this inner source um, conference who fit that profile. And if so, we want to chat with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, go ahead. Well, I was so, just going to say, so for people that kind of don't know, Andy um, has had a, I think a really nice idea. I don't know when this idea was hatched. Um, but it's, it's the idea that obviously the working groups work the way that they work. Um, but as a 
as a lot of you know, the working groups have a tendency of being kind of <laughs> the same set of people on a, on a weekly basis. And they're all very bright people thinking about very, very great things. Um, but kind of, kind of providing an external check on kind of the work within the working groups. And so Andy had proposed maybe a, a twice yearly meeting from an advisory board that would just attend one of the working group meetings. Andy, you can totally correct me if I'm wrong, but they would attend the working group meetings twice a year um, just to kind of get a sense of what the metrics are that are being deployed, how those metrics are being deployed in tooling, and just give their feedback on, on what they think the direction of the working group is. Mm -hmm. Just advisory, not certainly not steering the, the work officially by any means. Is that about right, Andy? That's what I have in mind. Um, the involvement would be very lightweight and um, as much as anything, it would be a way for us to get some validation that the things that we are talking about here matter to you know folks in the field. Uh, it would be an opportunity for networking perhaps and, and just to almost like a, a kind of like a sensory organ to you know, to ask for some feedback beyond, um, you know, beyond our own expertise. Mm -hmm. So, I, I um, love the idea. So it doesn't work. So the work doesn't live in a vacuum. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. So, Andy, do you mind sending an email with some kind of detail so I can try to look for the people there at the Inner Source Commons and say, hey. Yes, I'll, Daniel, um, if you could please uh, post your email uh, on yeah. the chat. And then I'll send you an email, and, and actually I'll I'll copy everybody. Yes. With a with a one pager, um, with a with a profile of what we're looking for, and mm -hmm. and maybe some some notes on you know what this group is intended to do, uh, what the intended involvement is, and what the benefits would be for participants. Mm -hmm. Can you, can, Andy? Can you write it somewhat generically so that I could share it? It could be shared with the other working groups too. Uh, oh, absolutely! And um, and by the way, this is on my to-do list anyway because because other people have been asking me for it. So yes, I will absolutely do that. I think a one pager would be perfect. Sure. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Um, okay, so let's see. No, actually, somehow somehow that became an action item for you, Andy. <laughs> Should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> Oh, I kind of a one page overview of what, um, what do we call it? A, a steering committee or uh, what do we call it? Advisory committee. Advisory board or committee, advisory committee, I suppose. Okay, what an advisory committee would look like. Um, another way of doing this, I mean, not for this time, but for the next one is to that you can, if that's possible, to the inner source commons, or, or or it can be kind of the bridge between both communities and somehow. So anything you have questions, I brought those questions there, and then the other way around, I bring questions here. Um, at least, if we could bring folks from the inner source <laughs> community into the daily or the weekly work of chaos, then you wouldn't have to <laughs> translate for yeah, everyone yeah. all the time, which would be good. As the summits are taking place, it's six months more or less. It's some, okay. It sounded to me like we work it. Okay. I appreciate you making that offer. So cool. Uh, all right. Great. And what else from folks? Um, Danny, was that everything on that one? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so I had a, I had one. I'll I'll say it. I um, a lot of you know that I'm always very interested in um, making sure that the work that's being done in the metrics working groups is finding uh, a home, whether it's in in software. So whether it's in the work that is being done around Grimoire Lab or the work that's being done around Augur. So I think continuing to to work to map the metrics that were part of the release to the software is something that I, I would love to see. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. It's important. I don't, yeah. So, uh, so that's important to me. And then also I, I think that for, if we think about version two release, I'm fairly certain that there are metrics that are being captured by Grimoire Lab 
And there are metrics that are being captured by Augur that are not at the moment documented as part of the metrics release. Correct. Safe to say, I'm guessing. Yeah, I know it's true for Augur. I'm sure it's true for Grimoire. But, but there's metrics that you're that you're demonstrating through Grimoire Lab or Augur that right that we haven't captured. So I'd like to encourage the folks that are at Augur or Grimoire Lab to participate in the respective working groups because I, th I think we can as part of the next version release of of software. I'm sorry, the next release of metrics. Um, we can actually just articulate things that already exist, which would be, I think in the, in the first release, we were articulating things that didn't exist in software at, at certain times. And it made the work a little bit, um, a little bit long sometimes, but I think if we can rely on what's already deployed in software, that might speed the process up a little bit. Um, Sean, I know you're doing this with risk, mm -hmm. that there are things that are currently in Augur that would be contributions to the risk working group. I'm, I would take a guess that what's in Grimoire Lab and Augur would be pretty straight contributions to the evolution working group, but they're yeah. not documented in the evolution working group metrics release that are currently being deployed in both of those tools. Um, so anyway, that, this is one of my thoughts. So I don't know if anybody has Thoughts on this? I'm trying to think of ways to, to think towards the metrics release version two. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're actively doing that with risk just because I'm so involved with risk. Okay. And I think that there's a number of value metrics that are also either published already or in the next release that, that we're working on. Okay. And, and I, I'm sure just like Grimoire Lab, we have metrics that, that are available that are not defined yet as chaos metrics, largely around the evolution working group. And maybe it's not um, like in, in say in the evolution case, maybe it's just as simple as identifying, you know, three or four, you, you may have 20 for all I know, but maybe just identifying a small subset. Yeah. For version two. Right. And then, yeah, I mean, I think it's likely that, that Grimoire Lab and Augur have similar metrics defined and so then that can become a really good conversation on that group about what, what are the parameters and filters Perfect. And what are the core parts of the metric? Yeah, I think those are all great. I mean, I think this is a, a good path to go down so that it becomes more concrete to the consumers of chaos metrics. Okay, so I'm just saying um, for the metrics version to release, again, these are all just ideas of other people have comments, um, but identifying deployed software metrics, deployed metrics in software, um, bring these forward as metrics or V2, um, and at the same time, just having on your radar attempts to deploy or work to deploy uh, V1 metrics in software as appropriate. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, any comments on that? I'll talk with the working groups on these things too, but I just wanted to put this out here in the community call. Um, okay, so yesterday, I don't remember which call it was, but I have a, so the other part of, part of this is I, I would really love to see the metrics and software, kind of this combination of both of them, uh, being deployed in, um, in, in white papers or deployed in, in reports. Um, quite similar to the work that Grimoire Lab has done with OpenStack around the uh, gender report. It's, it's fantastic, right? So it's a, it's a great report that everybody can understand and it's using both the tooling and ways to think about metrics as a, a very, um, very insightful report. So, I, I mean, that's great. And, and they've been doing, how many, has, how many times has OpenStack done it, Daniel? Three, maybe? At the end, three, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's nice because it, at this point now, the report has some history and you know the first report doesn't have a lot of contextual meaning, but over the course of several years, it starts to mean something for OpenStack, which is really great. Um, I, I would like to propose that we identify 
an open source community and offer to create a report based on the chaos metrics that we have released. And I would actually work to shepherd that. So what came up was, I don't think Kate's on the call right now, but what came up was like the Zephyr community. And I only mention that because Kate's on the board and Kate is involved in the Zephyr project. But for example, reaching out to the Zephyr community and seeing if they would like a yearly report um, built on, on the chaos metrics, using the chaos metrics across all working groups to provide insight on the community and it's something that we would do as a community. And again, I would take that on. But using the metrics that we have, using the software that we have, and working with an existing project to provide insight on their, on their project. And I yeah. think... I, we're certainly I, doing that with software in the case of some projects. So I think an annual... What would an annual report look like? Uh, yeah like a summary of like maybe something like uh, what Remy the cause maker did for Twitter. I would probably um, actually probably base it more on the style that uh, Grimoire Lab, the folks at Petergia had done with OpenStack. Okay. So like a, so more of a written report. Yeah. More of a written report. Um, but I mean, we could actually work with, I mean, obviously we would work with the folks at whatever project it might be to find out kind of what the, profile of the report should be. I'd be open to anything, I suppose. The only thing I would look for would be like an ambassador in that community for yes. doing this. That's why I picked Zephyr because of Kate. Mm. <laughs> but to totally agree. I mean, we wouldn't want to do it just as an external observer. <laughs> and we just generate the report based on no insight from the community. 100% agree. Perhaps one of the things we can do is to look for the uh, I mean, we have certain metrics in the release and we are going to have some others in the next release. Yep. But uh, uh, perhaps a, a kind of question I keep having once and again is this, what are the five the metrics I should be measuring? And this is a really hard uh, question to have, but uh, answer to have, but perhaps from the evolution point of view is, or uh, risk or yep. TNI, we can go for that and have some kind of not not even a, a written report like twenty pages that requires a lot of effort, but something like a flyer. So we we produce in Viteria these kind of things, for instance, for Uber and some other companies, and it's it's like one page, two pages. It's done, so it's something quite straightforward. It and then we can have like the same. Uh, so we define like the metrics mm -hmm. and then we we try to have them in Ogor and in Lumar Lab. So then we, and then we, we have the flyer at the end. I don't know. Something Are those like, flyers publicly available? Could I, I mean, Oh yeah. Just from, a, mean, from a structural perspective, I'd just be interested to see is how you, if you've already thought through this, that would, yeah, make, that would make a ton of sense for me. Uh, well, maybe you, you keep discussing and then I can look for it. Okay. Um, I see Andy's been, I think Andy's been putting a few options in here. Uh, Just tossing out ideas. Yeah, please toss out ideas. I think it's a great idea, by the way, to, to have a focus and mm -hmm. to try and produce a showcase. I think that's really smart. And I think we're gonna have to do the work, meaning me, I'll, tell, I'll take this on as one of my action items for the year. Um, and it would, it would, the hope would be is that it would be kind of a chaos slash community branded, whatever that community might be, flyer or report um, that brings these things forward. And I'd, I'd really honestly like to stick with the chaos metrics that were part of the release. That's using the chaos tools. That's kind of my goal. I don't know what people think about that or if we would kind of cast the net wider. You know what I mean? Just stick with the chaos metrics. I mean, these are what we claim are important for understanding risk or value or evolution and that, that we claim. So think, they, yeah, go ahead, John. So I think if we pick a few communities, one of the things that, 
that we can do that will be helpful is to talk to that community first about what what is the context of the things that they're interested in. So we have a number of chaos metrics that are released, the number that'll be released again here in a few months. Yeah. And I think every community is going to be interested in a different subset of those metrics or most interested totally. in a different subset. Yep. So doing reports for say three communities gives us an opportunity to think about, okay, how do we put all of these metrics in context for specific mm -hmm. communities so that it's, you know, here's your metrics, boom. It's not that it's more of a discussion and a refinement of what the report looks like based on the questions that are most salient to that community at that time. Okay. So and the, then that, that inserts kind of a, a context around the metrics. Yep. So the idea would be is saying, just hear me out as I walk through this, but here are all the chaos metrics. They all may not be salient to your project. So why don't we talk through the ones that are most meaningful to you with respect to evolution or risk or value or whatever that might be. Um, and, and producing a smaller subset of the results from those metrics, because those are the ones that are insightful for that particular project. Is that right? Right. Right. Where, yeah. Which are the, what are the, and it's not, it's really about kind of what are their concerns. So communities at different levels of maturity have different concerns. Okay. okay, cool. I just share with you through, through the chat, the, uh, the flyer we had with uh, Uber. Okay, so thanks. You saw Uber focusing in activity I, and performance. Oh, go ahead. You sent it privately. Is that, can I share oh, it? Oh, no, 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 it's for, uh, Public thing, yeah. Oh, so I can okay. So it's I guess I guess if it's on Twitter, then it's <laughs> no longer private. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So let me share again with everyone. Yeah, sorry about that. So yeah, and in terms of community, we were looking for the core developers, regular and casual developers. So those were kind of basic metrics. Well, those were meaningful at least to understand the growth of the community in open source and and so on for Uber. Okay. Um, how the community is, but those were kind of, I don't know, how many metrics we have there, like eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So th this is what I meant by a flyer. Yeah. So it's, it's like Sean was saying, it's a smaller subset of everything that's available, but that smaller subset provides meaningful insight to that particular project. Exactly. Okay. No, this is really great. Um, do other people have thoughts on this as well? Um, okay. Uh, I, I have one idea to put out there and that is um, so I think it'd be great to create a showcase for one organization uh -huh. um, I also think it would be very interesting to pick one metric that applies you know to, to any project and um, I personally I believe that you know if we had like something like a chaos score or, or, or something like that you know, where we could, we could brand it, we could talk to press about it, that sort of thing. It would be a way to generate awareness and, um, and maybe it would be a, a way for people to discover, you know, the chaos community. So it could be like the most effective, the most effective open source project or the open source project that has the most contributors or the fastest growing open source project or, or something like that. Just one or two metrics, very simple that anybody could understand like in 10 seconds. Is it like the velocity stuff? Could be the project velocity. It could be, it could be, you know, it would just be a metric, you, you know, like for example, there's a lot of surveys around the, um, the most popular uh, programming language. And, you know, it's something that that's easy for people to understand. There's, there's like, People pay attention to, you know, every year when the survey comes out, which languages go up in the stack and which languages go down in the stack. And they have debate about it. And it's, it's a way for, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of this, this widespread thing that goes out. And I, I think in a similar way, you know, we might be able to brainstorm uh, a single chaos metric, you know, we would call it like the best open source project in the world or something like that. It could even be a little bit controversial. That might be okay. Like clickbaity. <laughs> it could be a little bit clickbaity or a little bit controversial. And um, 
we could just say, hey, you know, we're the worldwide experts in measuring open source. We're telling you this is the best open source project in the world, or this is the one that is, you know, the best, and let people debate it and let people discuss it. And, um, and, and that would be a way, I think, of generating attention and, and so on. So just an idea. Sure. Think, I'll ask you to think of, think of that idea while trying to remain agnostic without using the word best. Because <laughs> so, I, I, I like the idea. So. Yeah, maybe it's not appropriate for chaos. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe chaos has to, has to remain academic and neutral and, and so on and so forth. So one of the things I, uh, so I've been involved, well, I was involved a lot of years ago in some European research and development projects, and one of them were related to quality models. Uh, so we tended to use at the very beginning the word good or bad. But the point is that after measuring hundreds of projects at that point in time, we realized that there were projects that were far from the average. And this is what we were using. So you have some a big amount of projects kind of in an average or uh, around certain metrics. And then there were projects that were far from that average. To the right, to the left. So then we can say that you are far from the average of the projects. And then uh, we are not saying this is good or bad, but that you are far, which is a bit different. But more diplomatic way of saying things. Yeah. I'll actually add that again. Cool. Uh, okay. Any, what else from folks on this? Um, if you do have a, if you're a part of a community or you know a community that might be a good candidate for this, as was pointed out, maybe somebody that has a liaison that would have an interest in being willing to talk about this, can you let me know? Mm -hmm. That'd be helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah, Matt, I, are we familiar with what the guys of Kubernetes are doing? It seems that can also be an interesting community to look at. Say that again, Armstrong? I mean the Kubernetes community. It seems they're also doing something interesting that we can also look at. I'm having a real hard time hearing you. Oh, sorry, I'm outside now. Can you hear me now? Maybe I'll say yes at the moment because I could answer that question. <laughs> oh, I was just saying that concerning an organization, uh, what about Kubernetes? Oh, Kubernetes. Yeah. yeah, so Kubernetes came up when this talk was, was first kind of starting. I, my only reservation with something like Kubernetes is it's so huge that producing a report might be super hard or something like Hyperledger, also very huge. So I was trying to think of a community that might be more, uh, more smaller. <laughs> that was all. I didn't, I didn't want maybe for like, like, like I imagine that this report will produce a lot of pressure on software and metrics, right? That asking organiz like asking communities to think about these things in practice, will necessarily reveal problems with with the metrics or the way that we've thought about them and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, which is great. I think that's a, a big win out of doing this in practice. Um, and so the hope was that a, a smaller community, we could maybe be a little bit faster on those conversations and kind of understand the context of that community a little bit easier and things like Kubernetes or or Hyperledger, they're just, or the kernel or something like that. They're just so big that we may end up, uh, I don't know, it may just be really, really hard. At least, as, at least as a first pilot pass, that was the thought. I don't know if people have thoughts on that as well. Um, Kubernetes is gigantic and they also do have so many metrics, I mean, I mean, they do their own thing, really. Yeah, they do have dev stats. Apparently, I joined at the right time. We're talking about Kubernetes. We are. This was based on the conversation about that we had that kind of sprung up in DNI about trying to identify an organization or a project that we could do a health report for or a health flyer for. Um, so that's what this was. So, uh, all right. 
This is good. Any other thoughts on that for the annual report flyer? Like I said, I'll take the lead on that, trying to identify projects and trying to coordinate that. I, I, the, personally, it's very interesting to me. So, all right. So, so far we've talked about uh, inner source and inner source commons, uh, metrics release version two. These are all in the notes. And then this uh, annual report for uh, an open source project to start highlighting the work of the chaos project, both from a metrics and from a software perspective. Um, what are some other thoughts that people had for today or things that might be on people's mind? Georg, I know you're doing quite a bit right now on the DNI side of things. I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. Sure. The, I want to highlight one, one thing that we are doing with the DNI group. And that is related to and you, everyone who was at ChaosCon saw Gris Cuevas from the Apache Software Foundation talk about the, um, the work that she's doing with regards to diversity and inclusion in the Apache Software Foundation. And she wants to get a overview of what is happening right now. Where are we right now with in terms of diversity and inclusion. And part of figuring that out is doing a survey. The last survey the Apache Software Foundation did was in 2016, so three years later now is uh, time to redo that again. And in the conversations we have been having, she is very interested in leveraging the work that the Chaos Diversity and Inclusion Working Group has had and the um, and using the um, the questions the survey items so not the questions that we think of in chaos terms but the questions inside of the metric and for helping that I post the link here in the Google Doc we're collecting existing surveys to then also be able to say, these are the survey questions used elsewhere in the past. So we as a chaos diversity inclusion working group get a more holistic view and can help with the ASF survey in that regard. Okay. And then the next step is once the ASF develops its survey tool and collects the data and has insights. The goal is to feed that back into the diversity inclusion working group as well. So that, that's my, my view of things. I hope we can help the ASF here as chaos. And I hope that putting pressure on the metrics as you always call it, Matt, um, we can improve what we currently have in the DNI work group. Cool. Thank you for thank you for doing that. Um, I had also thought about possibly when the survey is completed, reaching out to folks at the LF to potentially run the survey on Linux Foundation projects. Um, I haven't done anything on that yet. I don't know what that would look like, and I don't know if a if the ASF. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's a problem in doing that, or if you have thoughts on that. Anybody, Georg. I always like to build a big tent and invite people in. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. So, <laughs> all right. So, okay. Um, the second thing besides the survey is working with the Linux Foundation events team, specifically with Angela, to. Um, to use our metrics on Linux Foundation events. And we are we have a doodle call out for anyone who wants to participate in this. And because we, well, short notice today would have been where everyone who answered so far could have joined, but I think we'll do it next Wednesday. Okay. That is what it looks like right now. I'll post the, link to the doodle also in the meeting minutes here post 
So anyone who wants to be part of this conversation with Angela, uh, is happy. I'm happy to include you. Please fill out the Doodle poll. Okay, cool. Um, it seemed to be, she seemed to be pretty receptive on this, which was great. Yeah, we've had this conversation now for ever since we started Chaos, basically. And okay. Now that we have released metrics, was a good time to actually make it happen. Cool. Okay, great. Uh, all right. Thank you for that, Georg. Um, any, are you done? Uh, just a clarification for the Baltimore events. Uh, is it happening over the weekend? The um, collaboration event the hackathon in Baltimore is this weekend, yes. Okay. Are you asking if you can help? It, sure. So I was I will look if my how my availability will be so that I can also come. Yeah. So I'm I'm still a little fuzzy on how exactly everything will work out. <laughs> I think there will be a Slack channel somewhere. It's only Tuesday, so that's <laughs> so much time. <laughs> exactly. I, my understanding is that we produce these one pagers. I don't know if, uh, Sean, if you finished the one for Augur. Nope. Nope. Nope, I've, uh, I've been sucked into other phenomena related to Augur. Yeah. But we're having yeah. fun. We got a paper out and two more edited, so I haven't gotten to that. And I don't know if it's useful at this point to get to it. Um, we have an infinitely easier version of Augur to build, as we did in our we showed in our our weekly chat last week. So, do you think it's, it's still valuable if I get you the one pager, or is is that train kind of out of the station? The one pager is not training. The one pager. No, is... I mean the train. Like, like, is it too late? Was the question? Sorry. That was, uh, was the question was the, did the train leave the station? I or don't it... think it has yet. My okay. understanding is that this one page, um, this is Augur, this is what you can do with it, will be okay. given to the students at the start of the hackathon yeah. as a decision right. support. I can help you with that, Sean. And really all yeah. that it is for Augur is. Um, I mean, we've got the material, right? We just have to send yeah, it. Yeah, it's here. consuming the meetup endpoint. So it's kind yeah. of having a student trying to uh, get meetup data in fire yep. using the meetup API. Okay. Yeah. That might be nice for the uh, FOSDEM table as well, if we if we get it, to have one for Augur and one for, for more lab. To, What's your thought there? To kind of show off. Uh, that, that might be nice for fa the FOSDEM table as well. If we uh, if we get that to have uh, meetup stuff? Kind of that, that, that document for both Augur and Grimoire Labs. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And then print flyers. Sure. Yeah. So the one pager is given to the participants at the start of the hackathon. They look at it, say, yes, this is a project I want to work with for the next, I don't know, 27 hours or however long. And then it would be good to have people on a Slack channel, IRC. I don't actually know where we will meet with these students to answer questions and provide help throughout the whole hackathon. So you, that, do they have a Slack channel that they're using that they'll create channels within for us? I don't or, know. Because I have a public support Slack for Augur, but if they have a if they have a channel focused on the event, then that might be easier for the participants. Yeah, I don't know either. I think we just need to know if we're listening to our channel or there's another ch uh, Slack org we should be in on. <laughs> I would love to be able to answer that question, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Um, and so I, I don't even know, Georg, have you given Jacob the one pager for Grimoire Lab? Does he have that? I think I sent him both Google Docs. So okay. if, you, if you work in the Google Doc 
Uh, Sean, that yeah. I sent him, he will probably see your new edited version. I don't think he has taken a look at it yet. Okay. okay. Do you have that email? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, what else from folks? Alrighty. Uh, anything from software, um, the Grimoire Lab or Augur side of things that you want to talk about, or any of the working groups that wants to be brought to bear? All right. Silence. Okay. No. Right. Did somebody say something? No. I added to the Chaos Weekly already the I update from Remote Lab. So Thank you. Remote Lab is adding yeah. GraphQL support for their identity manager. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> One last thing. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks very much for your time. It was a nice talk today. They're all nice, by the way, but this one was especially nice. So, yeah. All right. I'll catch y'all later. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.